Hello and welcome to the podcast. In this episode, I'm going to talk about some recent research which suggests that the male brain and the female brain are indeed different. To help us understand what that research is saying, I'm going to quote from uh, an article which is in Science Daily, and the article is titled, Study Identifies Distinct Brain Organization Patterns in Women and Men. And it's referencing a new study by Stanford Medicine, which shows that according to their AI model, they have a greater than 90% success rate of determining whether scans of brain activity were from a woman or a man. The findings to be published, now have been published, in the Proceedings of the National Academy for Science help resolve a long-term controversy, or should that be controversy, that's controversial, about whether reliable sex differences exist in the human brain, and suggest that understanding these differences may be critical to addressing neuropsychiatric conditions that affect women and men differently. And I think that is really important. We need to understand why that happens. What are the causes? And the article goes on to say, a key motivation for the study is that sex plays a crucial role in human brain development and ageing and the manifestation of psychiatric and neurological disorders. Identifying consistent and replicable sex differences in a healthy adult brain is a critical step toward a deeper understanding of sex-specific vulnerabilities in psychiatric and neurological disorders. Again, this is really important. We, we do need to know what is going on, why, why this happens. And I'm going to just dive into another article, then we'll come back to the one that we began with in a moment. But this is from the Lancet Psychiatry 2017, and it says sex and gender differences in mental disorders are among the most intriguing and stable findings in psychiatry. So... Jumping into that article, I've picked out one part of it, which uh, tells us that a similar gender gap exists in the prevalence of anxiety, trauma-related and stress-related disorders. In their review, Lee and colleagues tried to find explanations for this gap, focusing on the potential role of sex hormones, estradiol and progesterone. They proposed that women might be more vulnerable to these disorders because of the greater monthly and lifespan fluctuations of these hormones, which obviously cannot only modify neurotransmitters and neurosteroids, but also influence cognition and behavioural processes for the gender gap in these disorders. A further review should discuss potential psychosocial explanations and we see here that you know this is multifactorial it's not just one thing and i think that's important to bear in mind but one of the one things is important to understand but i i I will say right away that there are also of of course psycho social and also upbringing influences in the mix and this will be mentioned in a different way in a little while but hopefully you find that intriguing, I do, that there is a lot of research in this area because there are these differences. So here's the article, the the, the, the Lancet article was quoting, just for your info, why are women so vulnerable to anxiety, trauma-related and stress-related disorders, the potential role of sex, hormones, and that's by Lee Bronwyn Graham. So, uh, back to our Science Daily article, which was quoting the uh, the work of, well, as she says here, Menon is the study's senior author. And Hotspots says that most help the model, this is the AI model, distinguish male brains from female brains, include the default mode network, a brain system that helps us process self-referential information and the striatum 
and limbic network, which are involved in learning and how we respond to rewards. So basically what this AI system is doing is looking at a huge amount of information, a huge amount of data points, and also then finding these so-called hotspots, which seem to be the areas to pay attention to when trying to identify whether this is a male brain or a female brain. And this default mode network is something which is sometimes called sort of wakeful resting or resting awake, a daydreaming state. It can be associated with uh, thinking about the future, planning, thinking about the past, thinking about other people, thinking about ourselves. And that's what it means there by uh, self-referential information. It's sometimes called like non-task specific or task negative, <laughs> the task negative mode. In other words, it tends not to be operating when we're very focused and involved in a task. And the striatum well, the dopaminergic inputs, um, one of the main areas that, that they get to is the striatum. So there's an association with um, dopamine, with reward, with anticipatory reward. And the limbic network is, amongst other things, associated with some basic emotional processing. And it says there also that uh, it, it, it's involved in, in learning and, and it mentions, again, uh, rewards. So the investigators noted that this work does not out, or sorry, does not weigh in, there's a typo in the article, um, someone should be punished, they made me read it wrong, <laughs> whether sex-related differences arise early in life or may be driven by hormonal differences or the different societal circumstances that men and women, women may be more likely to encounter. Now, I want to just... Just expand on that a little bit. So if you note here, it says this work does not weigh in, in other words, make no real comment on whether sex-related differences arise early in life or may be driven by hormonal differences. So that article from The Lancet was exploring the hormonal differences early in life. Now, many of us are aware of the importance of childhood and how that can impact the way we think our, our behaviours, there can be stressors, there can be some trauma in there as well. And if we then throw into the mix epigenetics, um, the, 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 the fact that gene expression can be turned on or off, um, methylation, um, the you know histone modification. And so so early childhood in particular, and adulthood of course, but early early child and, and childhood can can the environment can impact how the brain may function and 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 also potentially um, cause some structural changes. So so childhood is important and as mentioned hormonal differences and then societal and remember the other article talked about you know the the, uh, the the psychosocial element of it so it's likely to be multifactorial it's likely to be there's a lot of things going on that's not what this research is is zoning in on it's essentially saying we can identify differences there do seem to be differences however we arrived at them and it goes on. Um, I'm not going to read all that, but I'll, I'll go sort of halfway down the first paragraph. First, they created a deep neural network model, which learns to classify brain imaging data, sort of essentially created a, a brain to understand a brain. As the researchers showed brain scans to the model and told it that it was looking at a male or female brain, the model itself started to notice what subtle patterns could help it tell the difference. And this is the power, this is the good part of AI. Um, I think we have to be very careful of it, but, but this stuff is going to be really good at, as well as um, ultimately replacing a lot of the functions of a GP whisper it. Probably a bit more accurate, but it still needs human intervention and oversight. The model demonstrated superior performance compared with those in previous studies, in part because it used a deep neural network that analyzes dynamic MRI scans. This approach captures the intricate interplay among different brain regions. And I think this is also important to bear in mind. When we look at just one area of the brain, that's all well and good, but 
it's like Christmas tree lights in many ways who are in, you know, they, they, they can light up in a different sequence and, and that lighting up can give us looking at those lights, perhaps a different emotional experience. So I hate those colors. I hate, I hate that particular pattern. And I like that one. And in many ways, that sort of crude analogy is what they're looking at. It's that interplay. And when the researchers tested the model on around uh, 1,500 brain scans, it could almost always tell if the scan came from a man or a woman. The model's success suggests that detectable sex differences do exist in the brain, but just haven't been picked up reliably before. The fact that it works so well in different data sets, and I think this is also important, including scans from multiple sites in the US and Europe, make the findings especially convincing as it controls for many confounds that can plague studies of this kind. This is a very strong piece of evidence that sex is a robust determinant of human brain organisation. And as I was saying already, some of that could be because of societal um, influences, childhood, which could also be influenced by whether a child is a boy or a, or a girl. Um, so it, it's not going to be as straightforward as it may seem here, but I think this is very important information, particularly when we consider the need to understand the psychiatric differences, what, what is going on there. Making prediction success. Until recently, a model like the one Menon's team employed would help researchers sort brains into different groups, but wouldn't provide information about how the sorting happened. Now, this is also really important and has wider implications. Today, however, researchers have access to a tool called explainable AI, which can sift through vast amounts of data to explain how a model's decisions are made. So my crude explanation of that is that they've built an AI model, but they sometimes don't quite understand how it comes to its conclusions. And that's not just in terms of this study. More and more, we're seeing the AIs writing AI. Algorithms are writing algorithms. And the human operators sometimes don't understand how the AI or the the AI um, of the AI <laughs> comes to these conclusions, which is dangerous because we we need to be in control of this stuff. We, can't, we cannot be uh, allowing it to make decisions without understanding what on earth is going on or making decisions is probably the wrong way to put it. We cannot allow it. We should not allow it to be giving us answers unless we understand how it arrived at those answers. So, so this explainable AI is AI to look at what the original AI is doing and unpack and, and allow us to understand how it made these particular, or how it came up with these particular answers in this case. And that's that has, I think, ramifications for all sorts of areas where AI is at work. And it's great to see that that, that is there, in my opinion. In other words, how does it make up its mind? What, what is it thinking? How is it thinking? So AI to understand AI. And then lastly, in terms of our quotes from the, the original article. Our AI models have very broad applicability, Menon said. A researcher could use our models to look for brain differences linked to learning impairments or social functioning differences. For instance, aspects we are keen to understand better, so aspects we're keen to understand better to aid individuals in adapting to and surmounting these challenges. And I think this is really exciting. So, this goes beyond differences between male brain and female brain. It gets into understanding at an individual level where this person has challenges. Why possibly then they have challenges and what could be done about it? And as I said already, I think that we will find it's likely to be a, a, more than one thing, as I've said, multifactorial in terms of why there appear to be these these brain differences. But I don't think that we should rule out the fact that there are genetic 
hormonal differences, but there are also then epigenetic, genetic, environmental differences. There are also then societal differences, and that will take a lot more work to figure out what that weighting actually is. And of course, we're talking averages again. There will be people who, as far as they look, are a girl or a boy, but their brains may not work in this, let's say, um, traditional sense, uh, as, as perhaps at first glance this research might suggest. So in other words, the AI will get it wrong, and it will get it wrong because the body may be telling us one thing, but the brain is actually different. So once again, and where this research I think will ultimately come into its own, it's to look at everyone as an individual and not to allow biases, stereotypes, assumptions to get in the way. Yes, it's okay to say, well, it's possible. It may even be likely that this individual is going to have these particular conditions or this is how they are wired, so to speak. But I think, no, that's okay. That's interesting. But what is the individual actually thinking? Why are they thinking that way? What's going on under the bonnet or under the hood, so to speak? And this stuff will help us personalize things in a big way and really help individuals in the way that they need to be helped because of their own unique brain structure. Mm -hmm.